Hello everyone, this is Remelays from 40k Theories, and welcome to the April edition of the Patreon Q&A sessions. As always, if you want your questions answered, click the link in the video description below and help support the channel by becoming a patron. Now let's have a look at these questions. Eeltan asks, Now that the Tau who was supposed to kick off the fourth sphere of expansion have returned from the warp, how would the Tau react to those who were possessed by Chaos? And that said, how much damage could a demon possessed ethereal do? I think their reaction would be what Farsight's reaction was in Crisis of Faith. It would be like, what the hell is happening to that Tau and how do I kill it? Because in that story, the Warcast Pomalkiel becomes possessed by a demon of Zinch. Its corruption comes full circle at the end of the story where he starts sprouting eyes and mouths over his body and Farsight gets into a fist fight with it because Farsight is the only Tau badass enough to actually get into close combat. And strangely enough, he actually makes a banishing circle a la Full Metal Alchemist, which is slightly strange, but if anyone can do it, it's Farsight. So, so that's how the Tau will probably react. In regards to an ethereal doing damage, quite a lot, I would say. Luke Welsh asks, If the Emperor returned, would he try to end religion again in one big move, or do you think he would embrace it or try to get rid of it over time? Well, as we know, the Emperor was vehemently against religion. Like He despised it. He thought that it was the biggest lie that mankind had ever perpetrated. Officially, at least, anyway. We know he knew of the existence of the Chaos Gods, but then again, you know, there are some who believe that the Chaos Gods aren't even gods, just incredibly powerful organisms. See Fabius Bio. Um, I think he would be completely ashamed with what the Imperium has become with the Ecclesiarchy, because it'd be like, I never asked for this, or as it would be said in Deus Ex, I never asked for this. That's be the Emperor's reaction. Because the Ecclesiarchy was something he never would have set up, in my personal opinion. He never set up an equivalent to the Ecclesiarchy. And so the fact that one of the most powerful organizations in his Imperium is effectively the Church, I think that's going to piss him off somewhat. But that being said, he has to be somewhat careful because if he comes back, everyone's going to start celebrating and he sees the Church, he'll be like, I'm going to blow this Church up because it offends me. You might get another civil war between the Ecclesiarchy and the False Believers, or something to that effect. Zero Hits asks, are you going to do lore videos on the individual orders of the Sisters of Battle? I still need to cover the Sisters of Battle as a whole for my lore for newcomers series, but I see no issue in covering individual orders over time. Felix Argyle asks, would you rather swim in custard or climb ice cream? What the fuck, Felix? King Wiku asks, I'm curious as to how you feel about the quotes from the hive mind on the mission cards of the second edition Nid Codex. It doesn't surprise me, <laughs> to be honest, that the hive mind has its own voice. One thing you could argue it's that this voice is a verbal representation of the instinctive impulses. Uh, sent out by the hive mind. The fact that the hive mind quote unquote speaks isn't really surprising given the fact that in Dawn of War 2 Retribution, the hive mind does speak to you if you pick the nids. Even if it's something simple like consolidate position, feed, that kind of thing. Brent Feast asks quite a lot of questions. If you could take one race or faction that exists in the lore, but isn't represented on the tabletop and give them rules, what would it be? Probably the Rat Goal, because let's be honest, Lizard Centaurs with Chainsaws for Arms are pretty badass. Who is your favourite non-combatant character in the 40k universe? By non-combatant, I'm assuming you mean someone who doesn't actually go onto the field of battle, which is... Kind of hard to pick from in regards to 40k. Hmm. I was initially going to pick Lotara Saren, but she's a naval officer, so she does actually fight. Oh dear. Uh, 
In which case, I would probably go for John Grammaticus. Because he's a scheming little bastard, but he's pretty interesting, I'd say. Can Zeech come up with a plan so convoluted that even he can't understand it? Yes, and it'll be just as planned. And given that the Imperium are more often than not simply executing mutants, and that in humans genetic mutation is more common in males, shouldn't the majority of the Imperium's population theoretically be female? I'll be honest, my knowledge on biology and genetics isn't up to par enough to answer that question, so I'm going to have to pass that one, I'm afraid. Nat3.Despelez asks, The Adeptus Custodes Codex says that only three people in the galaxy know how to make custodies. Do you think that call is one of them? Probably. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me at this point. I mean, let's be honest, yes, call knowing everything is a little bit of a convenient ex machina. I don't know if that's the right term, it probably isn't, but... Again, with Cool's knowledge on the Space Marine genome, it wouldn't surprise me. And the fact that he is now going to be represented in the Horus Heresy novel series, as of Wolfsbane onwards, we might actually get some answers, so maybe? But I'll wait until those novels come out before I can make a concrete statement on that. And finally, Austin Horner asks... In one of your videos, you mentioned how Sanguinius' soul was crystallized after his death. If a blood angel were to somehow obtain a shard of this crystal, do you believe it would grant the angel immunity from the Black Rage, or would being so close to the psychic signature of their Primarch cause them to immediately succumb to it? I'll be honest, I haven't a clue. <laughs> um, I know a shard of the crystal was actually used by Iskandar Kaon, the Black Legion sorcerer, to make the pommel gem in his force sword. But as far as I recall, I don't remember there being any additional traits coming from that crystal itself. I think he did it just more than anything to piss off the Imperium, but that being said, since it was used in a force sword, it might be used as a focusing device or something, I don't know. Um, it's certainly an interesting possibility, but at this point, I wouldn't want to guess one way or the other because there's simply not enough evidence either way, I'm afraid. And that concludes this month's edition of the Patreon Q&A sessions. As stated earlier, if you want to ask your own question and support the channel in doing so, click the link in the video description below. Until next time, this has been Remlays from 40k Theories, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.